Hello, folks. It's Professor Fiore. Have you ever wanted to do a simulation in Tina TI, but couldn't find the part that you needed in the library? Maybe there's a certain diode or transistor or maybe an operational amplifier, and you go through the list and you can't find it. What do you do? Well, we're going to show you exactly how you can get around that by loading in your own device models. So the first thing I'm going to say is make sure it actually has what you need in it already. It may not be immediately apparent. So typically, for example, right, you would maybe need a diode. So I'm going to go over, over here, grab a diode, right? You would double click on the diode and come over in here and hit the ellipsis. And you get a big list of all the diodes that are available, right? That looks like quite a few diodes. As a matter of fact, there's 505 diodes in this list. But there are multiple lists, right? So in this case, there is a standard list. However, let me get rid of this little diode so it doesn't get too cluttered. Maybe I'm interested in an op amp. So here's an op amp. Again, hit the ellipsis. And we can see that there's, you know, not too many. There's only 13 op amps in this list. So you could come in and look in one of the other model sort of sub libraries. And hey, suddenly there's a whole bunch more, 66 of them in here. Okay. And off you go. You can check different groups in here. Macro NPN input. All right. So that expands things out a little bit. But there's even more than that. Instead of just going directly into the uh, you know, op amp or diode or you know, whatever the heck it is, come over here and grab spice macros. So these are all devices that you can pull out that are in the form of a spice macro. What the heck is a spice macro? Well, spice is what programs like Tina TI are built on. This is a program that was around back in the 1970s, if I remember correctly, um, which was all text-based. So you would create a Spice macro file that would describe your circuit. And basically what you do is you would, you would draw out your circuit on a piece of paper, and then every single connection point you would give a number. Ground would be zero, and you would go up from there. And your Spice file would just be a listing of all the components and where they're connected. So for example, you would have a resistor, and you would say, that's R1. It's connected from point 0.6 to point 0.19. It's 4.7K ohms. And then I have C1. It's a, you know, it's a capacitor. Maybe it's 10 nanofarads. That's connected between points uh, 3 and 49, you know, whatever the heck it is. And we'd have a big long list of this, and that would be your circuit. And then at the end of it, there would be little directives that you would have for the kinds of analysis you want. DC analysis, AC analysis, transient, and so forth, right? And you would feed that into the SPICE program, and it would spit back out an output file, another text file. None of this is nice graphical stuff like we're used to, but you would get a text file and it would have all of the, you know, values that you were interested in having it compute, all right? So we still use that sort of old school SPICE file to describe devices. These are sort of sub-circuits, right? We call them macro models. So I would have a, a, an op amp, for example, and I would build a macro model around it and describe it in terms of this file, All right? So for example, I'm gonna come in here and uh, just grab operational amplifiers. Er, come on. There we go. All right, so I've got a bunch of op amps over here, right? I've got 700 op amps in here. <laughs> it's a far cry from the 13 that we had originally. Some of these are actually duplicates. You can find some of the same op amps in the original versus here. And oh, just a word of caution, macro models and the built-in models from the library are not necessarily one-to-one -one identical. If you use one in, in a circuit and then use a different one, you know, like a TL071 versus a TL071C, there are going to be subtle differences, right? 
in any case so you got a much bigger selection than you might at first think but let's say that even then you don't have uh, the item of interest in the library what do you do so just to kind of show you I've gone on the web and I found a spice model for an op amp that's not in the list. Now, Tina TI is literally a version of Tina that was made specially for Texas Instruments, hence Tina TI, right? Okay, so they have all of their own components in there. They're not going to put in things from competitors. So analog devices makes op amps just like TI does. Well, I might want a particular analog devices model. So anyway, I go on, on uh, to the web and I go to the analog devices uh, website and I find a device. And what I did is I just downloaded the file. It's just a text file. They typically end with a .cir extension, you know, circuit. Save that somewhere. So what I did is I just saved it into the um, Spice library directory of Tina TI because I know that's where um, this thing, as you'll see in a sec, is going to pop up. So it's just going to make this a little easier. But you can save them anywhere you want. Okay, you just, you'll just have to navigate to it. In any case, to make your own model, here's the process. You go up to Tools and you come down here for New Macro Wizard. You've got to love wizards. Okay, not exactly a Gandalf, but here you go. So you give this a name, right? Macro name, new macro, boy, how inventive. Typically, you would put the device number in here, right? This is an 80 AD, not 80 as in the uh, number 80, right? So this would be like an AD, I think it's an 8033, if I remember correctly. Um, you can, if you want, go right onto the web, right? This will, if you click on this, this from web, um, it'll actually open up a mini browser and you can go to the site that you want and grab the circuit file. But um, so I've already grabbed it, so I'm just going to do this from file. So you click on the little button over here. And like I said, this defaults to opening up in the Spicelib directory. So here it is, the ad8033.sir. And I'm going to open that. All right, select that. Oops, try that again. Okay, um, I'm going to move over to next at this point. And what it's going to give me is a sort of default little generic box that has numbers on it for the various inputs. You're probably not going to want this unless it's a very specific kind of circuit that doesn't have um, a standard circuit diagram, you know, symbol for it. Op amps, you know, there is a standard for uh, you know a five pin op amp, right? You've got your two input pins, inverting and non-inverting input, you've got your output and your plus and minus power supply. So a five pin op amp. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using auto generate shape, which just gives me this box, I am instead gonna say load a shape from the library and it's gonna try to find something that matches. And lo and behold, I get something very close. This happens to be a comparator, a five pin comparator, which is pretty close and it'll actually you know, looks pretty good, but in fact, if I just open up this, there is Amplifier 5, a 5-pin op-amp model. So I'm going to select that, all right? And you can narrow down the search if you want, right? You can narrow it by the number of pins, the shape type, and so forth. But, you know, for something like an op-amp, it's going to be pretty straightforward like this, all right? However, however you get that shape, then hit Next. All right, so what it's going to try to do is generate the um, proper pins. So I'm going to open this up so you can see this a little bit better. This down here in this lower section, this is the text in the .cir file, right? So you can see all of these little um, asterisk lines, these are all comments, right? So it says AD 8033 Spice model. You'll have the various... Um, notes and so forth from the manufacturer, all right? And then they will typically have, toward the end, the node assignments. So in their model, right, we've got these node numbers that I was talking about initially, zero being ground and so forth. Um, and they'll be uh, spelled out what they are right up here in the top. 
So Tina is smart enough to go through here and find this where it says subcircuit. Oh, that's pins 1, 2, 99, 50, and 45. Figure out what they're supposed to represent and then stick them onto this little diagram that you have. Now, it might turn out that your device or your, your SPICE model, the way it's, it's written, doesn't conform to these standards. And instead of all of this coming out perfectly, you know, automatically, you might see something like this. All of your pin numbers will be in a list down here, or maybe some of them will be in a list down here. In which case, you have to go and drag these things, these little, in this case, blinky, uh, pin number one to wherever it belongs, right? So, you know, I would have to know where that is. Well, this tells me the non-inverting input is number one. So there's my non-inverting input on the, um, on the schematic symbol. So I'm just going to grab my number one and just stick it on there and bump, there I am. So all five are set, right? If you do want to take a closer look at, you know, what this is, as I was saying, you know, you would find a resistor like here's R3. It's going from, you know, pin 99 to pin 5 or internal node 99 to 5. It's a 1K ohm resistor, right? So you look around here and you'll, you'll find all of these different things. Capacitors, right? Here's a cap right here. So on and so forth, all right? So you got that all set. You don't really have to understand what's inside the .cir file, right? In the old days, you know, that's what we had to do. Back in the day, as they say, I don't know when that day was. I think it was a Thursday, but you know, whatever. You don't have to worry about that. So just hit next. And this is going to prompt you to where you want to save it. All right. So I'll just say, you know, save it there, whatever. Okay. So it's now ready for use. So I can just finish, close this, or it will actually allow me to immediately insert this. You know, if I just am doing this to fill up my library, I don't need to insert it, I'll just finish. But here, I'll insert it. Boom. So there it is. Here's my AD8033. And I can start connecting things to it just like any other device that I would have had. All right. Pretty nifty. So this is not constrained to just the library that it has. As long as you can get a SPICE model from a manufacturer, you can import that and have an appropriate device for your simulator right? Cool. All right. Hope this helps. Take care and we will see you next time.